Yo, what's up guys, it's Zayo here, and today we're asking the question, should you play Azamina? And well, the short answer is, yes, you should. So, thanks for watching guys, make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. Alright, well, the long answer is, uh, not too hard to answer, but we're gonna go through it and you guys will actually decide for yourself if you want to play it. Let's go. So, starting off, what does the engine do? Let's talk about the minimal engine, playing the least amount of cards as possible, what do you get from it? Well, you get an Omni Negate before 7-5, it's pretty much your second action that you do. You activate one card... Then you activate another and you have your army negate just like that it helps you get monsters out of your hand or off the field uh if that benefits you in any way and that's mostly all it does for the uh super minimal engine which is like about, about like four cards or whatever but if you go a little bit bigger you know medium to a big engine you will know, add some more cards into it well you get some level six or level seven bodies whichever one uh they could just be link fodder if you want but if those lumbers matter then uh, that's pretty good you also get more disruption uh, in the form of sending cards to the graveyard and of course, you just get an engine that naturally recurs itself. The more Azamina cards you put in, the more it's able to shuffle back one of your extra deck monsters and then spit out another one. So you can keep doing it. And another little small bonus you get is uh, you could possibly win in time. Uh, we love to see that. All right, we, it has a card that it can burn your opponent and then make you gain life points. It's, it's a considerable difference. All right, it's like 3000 difference between your life points after that, but it probably won't usually come up but it is something to keep in mind if you uh you know needed a win con i guess all right let's talk about the engine size now like i said you could do a minimal engine or you could put more cards in i have all the ratios out over there so you guys can check it out uh it has the numbers uh some of them you can see like you know it just has straight up like three or one those are required pieces of the engine but the ones that are zero to three if you want to see more cards uh for the main deck ones then those help you see your audio negate uh, a lot more often and of course the extra monsters uh, you get more options to be able to put out bodies draw maybe a card or two and uh, get some monsters off the board but otherwise uh, you can go big or go you know small all right, let's talk about some of the cons of the engine, all right? The, the engine's pretty good, but what, what's the problem with it? Well, the price of the deck, probably. Um, the, the engine, depending on what rarities they put everything, if they put the three of to a secret rare, you might be looking at about at least $50 each copy. Probably more because literally every deck can just play this, like, for free. Like, I, I don't know. It's, the price will be a problem. But speaking of price, you know, I got a case myself. So, you know, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and uh, check out the live stream when I open my case. You know, you, maybe you guys can uh, <laughs> get some wins with me, right? And another con, uh, unfortunately, this, this engine does not be Shifter. Uh, it, in fact, just straight up does nothing to, to Shifter. Uh, just like the regular Dia Bellstar and the Simple Spoils cards, uh, yeah, you can't do anything on the Shifter. And with that, it also loses to Droll and Lockbird. Uh, because, you know, you're going to get drilled immediately, pretty much as soon as, uh, right before you make your Omni Negate. So if your deck already loses to Droll and Lockbird, this will not fix the problem. But, uh, you know, it beats every other problem. Another con of the deck, yo, make sure your opponent is not playing Dark, alright? If you're Dark, if they Dark, take your Omni Negate, it's wraps, man. That's, that's, that's not good news. That's all I'm saying, alright? Keep an eye out for that. Now we talk about what decks should play it. Well... Any deck that is already playing original Simple Spoils is this is literally the freest thing to put in your deck. You're like, oh, I have original Simple Spoils. Let's just go for Omni Negate. Or, oh, I have the Omni Negate. Let's just search for original Simple Spoils. It's the freest thing. You you pretty much just branch off possible plays in your deck if you're already playing the OSS. So that's already free. And now any deck that wants their monsters in the graveyard. Unfortunately, none of the cards send the monsters or tribute the monsters for effect. They are for cost. So too bad for you tier players. All right, they're not going to trigger. And of course, any deck that tr that benefits off having their monsters tributed, there's not that many. The most I can think of is like a diviner. And now any deck that loses to Nib should probably play this. Uh, this is one of your ways to just be like, you know what? We have a plan and it's draw our alternate engine. All right, so here we're going to show a little bit on uh, pretty much the, the most simplest case on how you're going to be able to use the new Azamina stuff. It's something such as voiceless, right? You have Diviner, of course, and if your Diviner gets imperm and you can't send anything, you know, that's the, that they try and stop it. Then you then you have the Dia Bell Star to be able to go into the Simple Spoils Deception. And this card tributes a monster from your hand or field. So you guys are seeing where we're going here. We're going to be able to tribute the Diviner, get to the Azamina engine, and then right after that, you get your value off Diviner and, of course, go into the Voices Voice stuff. So that's the most simplest case. Or, of course, you know, you get everything you need and uh, pretty much get an Omni Negate just for free off that. All right, and here I'm going to show you how an engine like this can help you get your bricks out of the hand, right? Like a simple 
harpoor isn't really you know th the best thing to do but it gets you a body on field and of course gets you the uh, harpoor in the graveyard so in a way this does help you go a little bit crazy because instead of going for just the omni negate you can go here into the one that adds and of course once you add you add the wanted to then be able to um, kind of loop things around, right? You can go for the Diabell Star here. You can Wanted and then shuffle back the symbol spoils that you put into the graveyard and of course get your free draw one. And then from here, you send, you can send the card that you summon, the Arshiel, uh, Arshielongo. Uh, summon out Diabell Star, set the Deception once again, and then add back the Azamina card. And then from here, you can activate it again because the effect to Future Summon is not once per turn. You can summon out your Omni Negate now and of course, send your deception. But of course, you want to flip the deception before that. I, I forgot to do that here. Uh, summon out your Omni Negates, and then you can go safely for your Heart Pour. And boom, you still get everything you wanted. You never risk the Heart Pour going anywhere. And uh, you still have full combo after that. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys. You know, now it's time for you guys to decide if you actually want to play Azamina in your deck or not. And you probably do. Uh, because I definitely want to play it in a lot of my decks now. That's this is the freest thing I've ever seen in my life. So make sure you guys like and subscribe because like I said, that case opening, as soon as the set comes out, we're going to be live streaming it. And I hope I see you guys there, you know, maybe we can get some doves in the chat, you know what I'm saying, like that. But that's going to be it for me, like I said, and uh, I'll see you guys later, right? Peace out.